Hello everyone, this is Brian Masters with Cooking Up Genetics. Today, we'll be making a stew of prokaryotic replication. To start, we need an origin, single-stranded binding proteins, the enzymes DNA polymerases 1 and 3, gyrase, helicase, ligase, and RNA primase for this dish. When our stew is cooking and the DNA begins to replicate, we will see a few factors at play in our mix. They aren't ingredients per se, but they are important to the recipe, so we will discuss them when they come up. In order to make our stew, we need to find our origin of re replication or starting point in the prokaryotic DNA we are using. We need to add DNA helicases at the two lacking strands near our fork, which will take off those hydrogen bonds of the DNA from 5' prime to 3', prime, forming a replication bubble. Then we will add our single-stranded binding proteins to protect our concoction and prevent any SSDNA hairpins in the future. You, you may notice that your DNA is wound super tight. That's perfectly normal. Gyrus's job is to relieve that supercoiling tension and prepare the DNA for the hydrolysis that helicase will perform. Now that our recipe is protected and unzipped efficiently, we, we need to sprinkle in some RNA primase which adds to both strands and provides three prime OHNs for polymerases to add nucleotides. Our leading strand runs from the five prime end to the three prime end and only requires one primer to replicate the entire strand. The lagging strand will form discontinuous Okazaki fragments and as DNA polymerases only add from five prime to three prime, the nucleotides must be added separately by multiple fragments. Polymerases will match nucleotides to existing ones on each strand. DNA polymerases 1 and 3 perform the process of DNA synthesis, writing nucleotides 5' prime to 3' prime and editing them from 3' prime to 5'. Prime. Polymerase 1 is different in that it will go along the 5' prime to 3' prime direction and nick and replace incorrect RNA nucleotides from RNA primase, removing those primers. Polymerase 3 is different in that it takes care of the bulk of elongation. If DNA polymerase 1 doesn't work properly, it can't correct the RNA primers, leaving uracils in the DNA. This is potentially dangerous as these mispairs are mutagenic. The mismatches will either be repaired by DNA glycosylases, which can in turn make a small area without bases, which is also mutagenic. We said that DNA polymerase 1 removed the RNA primase primers, forming a nick between Okazaki fragments. This presents a problem of a missing sugar phosphate bond between nucleotides. Now the mix just isn't right, and if you don't add this next ingredient, it will be a mess of discontinuous DNA on the lagging strand. Adding DNA ligase will close this gap with a phosphodiester bond, eventually resulting in new strands of continuous, properly formed DNA. Use the key provided to test yourself on these terms.